it's been like a week since the last time I played this. And naturally, a lot of developments has happened. A lot of things to talk about today. First of all, look at that. Finally wearing a different shirt. I wore that other shirt for like a month. Not gonna lie, I wore like the same pair of pants to work for like two months. Anyways, I got a lot of things to talk about today. First, of course, because it's been quite some time since I last played this, I have to use my amiibos first. Now, there's so much things for me to talk about today that I had to write all of it down. <clears throat> Just so I don't forget. There was a cock on my screen for a second there. First, let's use our amiibos. You know, I didn't mean to take so long to get back to playing this game, but you know, just uh, stuff happened in real life. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. <clears throat> the very first topic I want to talk about, or rather just glance right over, I want to let you guys know I failed again. The exam, I failed it again. Second attempt, I failed it. So now I only have one attempt left. I only get three attempts. I know, I know, I disappointed all of you, I disappointed everyone once again. I know, I'm a disappointment, I'm, a, 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 I'm an absolute waste of a person, I get it, alright? Let's not talk about this anymore, we're just gonna gloss over the fact that I'm a failure of a human being, and we're just gonna move on to all the, uh, you know, actually good stuff. The better stuff to talk about. <sighs> Whatever. It is what it is. I failed a second time, I failed a second time. We'll just move on. I'm not gonna, you know, cry like I did last time. The first time I failed, it was a harder blow. Pause. But, I, you know, it was it, it hit harder the first time. Second time, it's like, ugh, whatever. Honestly, it was kind of to be expected. At least on my end, you know? Whatever. Second time I failed, I'm just thinking, like, whatever at this point. I only get one attempt left, it's like, eh. And, uh, well, the next time I'm able to take it is in June, and, uh, it's only December now, so I have time. Am I going to spend the next six months studying? Whatever. Okay, let's move on. Oops, I didn't even break these barrels yet. So, as you guys can see, or barely see, I am still hunting for Suicune. It's been... I already lost count how many days it's been, but it's at least been over a week. It's been over a week of me non-stop resetting for Suicune. So, you know, I'm not as lucky as I was last time I hunted for Suicune, where it only took me five days. I suppose the universe is balancing itself out last time. I got so lucky with, uh, you know, getting Shiny Suicune last time, but... I was not lucky with catching it. Of course I caught it in the end, but ooh, I was having trouble. I was counting the PP and I was getting pretty low on the PP, but I still caught it in the end. This time, I'm prepared. I have a Master Ball for when the Shiny Suicune shows up. So I suppose uh, this time it's balancing itself out. This time with me fully ready to catch the Shiny Suicune with a Master Ball. You know, it's kind of the reverse of what it was last time. Now it's going to take even longer for the shiny to show up. But I'm not going to give up. You know, I've shiny hunted Suicune in Crystal twice before. So, what's a third time going to hurt, right? What's a third gonna, what's a what's the third time taking even longer going to going to do, right? You know what's something that has been in my mind for, well, like, the very, very, very back of my mind for, like, many years now, is that my original copy of Crystal, in my, uh, you know, the English one I have here on my 3DS, I never finished. Obviously, I finished the Johto portion, and I also got Shiny Celebi from it, but I never did the Kanto portion. Something else I never did was catch both 
Lugia, and Ho-Oh in the game. And not gonna lie, I kinda wanna shiny hunt them. Just cause they're the mascots of, you know, Gen 2. Gold and silver. And to be able to get all, well, basically all the box art legendaries in one game. Not gonna lie, it's kinda intriguing. I know in Crystal, to get Ho-Oh, you need all three Johto Beasts. And getting both Raiko and Entei aren't easy. I don't know. We'll see if I ever get around to that. It's not like I'm in a hurry to do it. <clears throat> and you know, I don't think I've mentioned this either. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna mention this. I have a shiny hunt in mind. That will take even longer than this. Even longer than Suicune. Because, you know, I'm solo hunting Suicune right now. There's not any other things that could pop up shiny. So the other hunt that I've kind of been inspired to do, and I don't know when I'll ever do this, or if I'll ever do it, is shiny Mareep in Gen 2. You might be asking why am I crazy enough to even consider that. Well, for whatever reason, Mareep is not available in Crystal. You have to transfer it from Gold and Silver. I know that there's this, like, glitch, there's there's the glitch ditto thing you can do to get, like, uh, a 1 in 64 chance with breeding, so I could do it very easily there. I could do that, or I could be stupid and, you know, genuinely hunt at full odds in gold or silver. Where, you know, a bunch of other stuff could spawn. We shall see what I'll decide to do. And if I even decide to do this hunt. And you know what? You, you want to know what else? <clears throat> I've been meaning to say this for the past few parts, but I kept on forgetting. You guys want to know what song I've been addicted to listening to for like several weeks at this point? The song is... How did it go again? It's a... Uh, Yoru ni Kakuru. Or Into the Night. It's by Yausa B. I really don't know how to say the band's name. Is it even a band? I don't know. Now, a part of me didn't expect there to be an English version of this song. And I don't know why I didn't expect it. Because, hell, Idol had an English version. I mean, that's how I even discovered these, uh, these artists. Is because of uh, Oshinoko and Idol. <laughs> <clears throat> but you want to know specifically how I discovered this song in particular? I heard it's sung by AI Presidents. I'm gonna list. I'm, I'm gonna link that down below because I <laughs> I saw that. I saw the AI pre Presidents sing it. I saw the the title. It's like ooh, it's a Yosa Yosa B song or whatever. However they pronounced it. And so. I clicked on it, I listened to it, and I liked it. I literally discovered a song I like because of an AI president's cover version of it. And not gonna lie, I do I do like the president's version also. Let's see. Should I get rid of this? But I don't want to waste it. You know what? Nah. I can get the I can get um a part of me doesn't even want to use this either. I can get the Gloom Sword back anytime. Oops. So we no need to start off with fighting a Gleok this time, because there was no Blood Moon. <sighs> okay, so I have a lot of things to talk about today. <clears throat> Just get that ready.
Okay, so today, today the day I'm playing this, today was the Weirdier Raid Day in Pokemon Go. And take a look at what I got today. If I go to Recent and Shiny. Today, I got a pretty strange looking Shiny Weirdier. All jokes aside, obviously today you can see I got a Shiny Clauncher. And, uh, well, a couple days ago, I got a shiny Galarian Darumaka. I also got... Let's see. I also got a shiny Snowrunt. I'll talk about when I got this one a little later. I don't think I mentioned this here. I got a shiny Hoppip and a shiny Alolan Sandshrew on the same day. A couple days ago. piece of hair on my phone. Also, I spat a lot just now. Also, today, no, wait. Yeah, I, I mentioned the Hundo Axew I got, right? Like, I mentioned the Hundo Axew. Today, I also got this, a Hat Eevee that is a Hundo. I got a Hundo Hat Eevee. But unfortunately, today, I was not able wait I'm trying to okay I was not able to get a shiny weird ear I tried like seriously I tried you can see here weird ear like weird ear I have 12 I have 12 weird ears I did 12 raids and no shiny let me see which one was it the best thing I got was this this not Shiny Weird Ear that is a 98 IV. So, damn. And you know what? That, is, that means Weird Ear is the first... The first Hisuian raid... Well, I should probably... Hold on. Hisui and raid? There we go. Is the first Hisuian themed raid day that I did not get the shiny. You can you guys remember when I got Samurott? Well I have Braviary, Avalog, and Cleavor, and also Samurott. I tried so hard to get the Weird Ear today, but I just couldn't get it. So now, you know, I'm missing a shiny Weird Ear from my uh, collection of Hisuian focused raid days. That's a shame. And you know what? I highly doubt we will ever get a Weird Ear Raid Day ever again. Because those other ones, we still haven't gotten them back yet. You know, for a full, uh, dedicated day. We have not gotten a Hisuian Braviary Raid Day, like, focus day again since the first time. Nor with Hisuian Avalog or Cleavor. You know, this stuff shows up in, like three-star raids from time to time but you know it's not the same as like an entire day focused on it <clears throat> and you know what was supposed to happen this morning this morning my friends were supposed to come pick me up like before work at like maybe 10 a.m. they wanted they wanted the three of us to go to this I don't know this Korean like store Korean I don't know what it is. It's not a supermarket. It's just like a Korean store. It might be a supermarket. I don't know. They just wanted us to go to this Korean store place early in the morning. And then, you know, they would drop me off at work. <coughs> but then they canceled, like, last minute yesterday. Saying the weather was going to be bad. Did I use all the amiibos? The weather was going to be bad this morning. So, changed that to next week. They changed it to next Thursday, and I'm just like, even better. Because Thursdays are my day off. So it works for everyone. Is there fish? I don't see any. Let's say there's not, so we can move on. So yeah, it was raining today. And today, I kid you not, I was standing out alone in the rain, just doing weirder raids. I, I kid you not. I am a sad, pathetic person, okay? 
Only I'm crazy enough to go out in the rain alone, like cross the street and everything, just to play Pokemon Go. I had an umbrella, of course. So luckily enough, I had my winter boots at work. So I was able to change into those to prevent my shoes from getting wet. And then I had to grab my umbrella from my car. Okay, anyway, so I realized that last time I said... Oops. I said that I was going to evolve my... Let's see. I was going to evolve my Hundo Rowlet here for you guys, and I didn't even do that, so let's do that right now. First, get rid of the 100 in front of its name. Okay, so. You can see here, Rowlet... Hundo. So let's do it. That's not how I evolve. Okay, let's see. Hundo Rowlet. <clears throat> There's the Hundo Dartrix. And now, evolve, once again, when it says this, I don't really care about that, I don't really do the battle league or whatever, so I don't care if the CP goes over. So there you go. Let me just appraise. Oh, wait, the, the nickname's still Rowlet. Get rid of that? Okay. <coughs> okay, Decidueye, not Rowlet. You can see here, Decidueye Hundo. My Hundo Decidueye. Now, the crazy thing is... Crazy thing is, I have another Rowlet. That's a Hundo. I could evolve this, but I'm kind of thinking, should I just leave it as a Rowlet? So I can have one, uh, one Hundo Decidueye, one Rowlet? Or should I have two Hundo Decidueyes? <laughs> I gotta pull up Zelda maps real quick. I also realized something, so... I was correct last time with the way I counted. There's only 49 Phantom Ganons in the game. But the math doesn't really add up for that. Let me just do the math real quick. 300 total stamps. You can see, 300. Minus 68. 68 Henoxes, slash uh, Stalnoxes. Minus 87 Taluses. Minus 4 Maldugas. Minus, let's see, 32 Constructs. Minus 14 Gleox. And then minus 40... Frocks, and then there were 12, like, 12 boss rematches, minus 12, that equals 43, and, uh, there's 49 Phantom Ganons in the game. Now, okay, one of them, I assume one of the 49 Phantom Ganons is the boss fight we did at the Sanctum, so that doesn't respawn. And then there's also the one from down here, the Labyrinth, that for that there's a bug in the game where it doesn't respawn. There's actually 54? Great. Man, I can't seem to find a concrete number on the Phantom Ganons in this game. From what I could tell, I thought Zelda Maps was a reliable source. And I only saw 49 there. <clears throat> Regardless... I'm assuming that, you know, this one, thanks to a bug in the game, doesn't respawn. And then one of them from Hyrule Castle, that one doesn't respawn either. So assuming 49, that means 47. That still doesn't equal enough. That means, like, there's going to be some Phantom Ganons that I just can't stamp. And if you're saying there really is 54 Phantom Ganons, minus 2, so 52, <laughs> that equals even more I can't stamp. Because, you know, with some basic math, if if there was, if there was, uh, I'll get to the game in just a moment. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I'm starting to play a game here. 
If there was 50... No. If there was 47... And, uh, well, the math was 43. That means I could just use a couple of pins, like, you know, just, like, dip into the reserves here and use a couple of pins to show where they are on the map. But if there's 52... Part of me feels like I shouldn't even stamp the Phantom Ganons. I know I, it hate, I hate the fact that I have to consider that. Because they are technically mini-bosses. They're not the same as many bosses since there's not the word defeated up in the corner but still they still have the health bar as a mini boss and I know some people will argue like well don't certain monster camps have the those health bars too and to that I say uh, shut up <laughs> okay but regardless so in in all honesty there's like almost no point to me going around and getting all the phantom Ganons. I was planning on stamping where all of them are, but at this point, it's like, what's the point? They're not required for 100%. You don't get the defeated next to their name, and there's not enough for me to actually stamp where they are. So at this point, is there even a point to me uh, going after all the Phantom Ganons? Or should we just end this? Should we just, should we just not go after the Phantom Ganons? You know how much it hurts me not to be able to stamp them? Because they technically still are a mini-boss. There's five at Hyrule Castle. Oh. <sighs> well, uh, well, I don't know what to do now. If we're going to just move on from doing Phantom Gandons, the next thing for me to do is the side quests. Hmm. That's not the... Wait, this still isn't? Uh-oh. Oh, pfft. Jesus, that scared me. You you, you did, like, the 100 bits or whatever. Whatever. You're an awesome streamer. Thank you for that, by the way. Okay, uh... I saw, I saw it highlighted in red, and I got scared for a second. How many sages do I have? Uh, hold on. If you're asking about Sage's Wills, then I still have to do the rest of those. But in terms of the Sages, then yes, I have all of them. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think we should just move on from the Phantom Ganon, since there's, like, no point. Well, that means I just wasted, like, three parts hunting down the Phantom Ganons with no resolve. Well, if that's the case, then my bad for wasting so much time. Let's see, if we're really going to do one of the side quests... Oh, there's only 60 in this game? Well, I know that there, there's like... Huh, I'm not done all the shrine quests. I know there's also these... Wait a second, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. There was like 92 in Breath of the Wild. This, this number makes more sense. Yeah, I know these ones were dubbed like long quests. Like, longer than usual side quests. While these ones, it's like... You could probably just get them done right away. Oh boy, just how many of these... Were I able to do... Like, right right at the beginning. Well, if we're gonna move on, we may as well, like... Start. It's been, like, 24 minutes. <clears throat> 10? At Hyrule Castle? You don't know why there is a bug in the game? You mean for the one in the labyrinth? Man, maybe that maybe there's a reason why there's no concrete number or guide on where all the Phantom Ganons are in the game. Okay, so let's see. What else do I have to talk about? Let me check my list. I had to write down everything. So, I promised last time we would talk about the Spy X Family episodes. I'm going to talk about that later on today. What if Season 2 also drops, so I'm going to talk about that. But before we talk about that, a couple other things for me to talk about first. Because after you beat the game, a sixth a sage shows up on the loading screen, but the sixth sage doesn't appear. Really? Wait a second, really? Hold on, let me, let me waste some time and take a look again. <laughs> Wait.
Wait, is there? No, there's five sages. Six sages. Yeah, there's six there. After you beat the game, a sixth sage shows on the loading screen, but sixth sage doesn't appear. Isn't Zelda the sixth sage? No, wait, aren't... Hold on a second. Isn't Link part sage now since he has Raru's arm? I guess I never noticed that. There's a sixth sage icon, and I never noticed that. <clears throat> that top sage is bugged out. Hmm. Interesting. Never knew that. Hold on a second. I did see what this side quest is. It's just fixing the roof. Mm. Lester, did you help Michael and Franklin rob that jewelry store? I've been re-watching some GTA 5 gameplay lately. With things as they are now, I really feel for the horses. Mm -hmm. Are you interested in horses? Unfortunately, your stable here is under construction. If you want to register or take any horse out, you'll need to use one of the other nearby stables. I was supposed to do this so long ago. I was supposed to do this at the beginning of the game where they teach you about it. They teach you about the game. The game's teaching me about stables now. Oh, I, duh, I already have the side quest in my, uh, adventure log or whatever. So I, I didn't need to talk to anyone to activate it. <clears throat> okay, so, a couple things to talk about. Since the last time I played this, Geometry Dash actually updated. It got updated to version 2.2. Finally, after how many years has it been since the game last updated with 2.1? Man, the last time Geometry Dash updated, I was in high school. And since then, since the last time the game updated, you know, I graduated high school, I went to college, I graduated college, and I failed the exam I have to take after college two goddamn times. So like, yeah, it's been a pretty long wait for Geometry Dash 2.2. See, the thing is though, like, I'm not too sure if I like this update, because it's kind of overwhelming. The game I've known for like the past, what, six, seven years? however long it's been since the game last updated, has just been, you know, kind of like, uh, like, I don't know, the impossible game where you just tap to jump and dodge obstacles. Uh -huh. But now it's a full-on, like, side-scroller. It's like, it's not the same game anymore. It is, but it's also not. <clears throat> And uh, let me remind you guys that I once was top 100. I was once a top 100 player globally for Geometry Dash. But you know, since then I've slowed down on playing it. Now my ranking is like, what, 300 something globally? Like, I kid you not, globally I was top 100. But you know, that time's long past. Let's see. Lester, who manages a stable at Loka Landing, told you his beige, beige, what? So I need to find the horse. You know, what I might have to do, like, off screen, is I have to go into my map and remove all the Phantom Ganon spots, stamps. I don't like doing this, but, you know, blame Nintendo. So I need to find that horse. Well, great. I don't know which horse it is. Is it this one that's just sticking out of the rest? What? I can't tell if that's the horse or not. Huh. <laughs> 
Could this be the horse? It's very uniquely patterned. Is this your horse? Hearse? Horse. Well, the name being Spot, then I would say yes. Also, just before doing this, I gave my dog a butt bath because it was filthy back there and it stank a lot. I was supposed to do it yesterday night, but then I got lazy. But yeah, Geometry Dash 2.2 came out. Mm -hmm. I already beat the official new level, just titled Dash. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, I, I feel like Rob Talk could have came up with a more clever name than that. Given the previous level that was out for like six to seven years was called Finger Dash instead of Finger Bang. You know, Rob Top's too much of a pussy to just name it Finger Bang. Nah, I'm kidding. You know, it's kids play the game, they see the name Finger Bang, it's like, what do you think? Obviously, us adults with our tainted minds, when we hear the words Finger Bang, we think of something else. Alright, what's next? The Blocked Cave. Yikes, that one's quite far. Uh, yeah, so Geometry Dash 2.2 is out. Crazy stuff. I, I kind of dread. Like, I haven't gone into the online user-made levels yet, and I'm kind of afraid to. I don't know, it's like, there's so much potential now for creativity and what people can make. It's like, I kind of don't want to see that creativity, because it's just too much. <sighs> Zelda is the sixth sage? Yeah, I figured. Okay. Man, if I'm not fighting Phantom Ganons anymore, how am I gonna get an infinite stash of Gloom weapons? <coughs> okay, let's see. What else is there to talk about? Well, when it comes to Geometry Dash, something that I've wanted for literal years is more customization. And I don't I don't mean like the new the 700 new icons. I meant more the color. Seriously? Like that's the side quest. Something that I've wanted for years is maybe for Robtop to implement like a color wheel so that you could literally just pick your own color for your icons. And well, that's not the case, but certainly there's more color variety now. And and something that I've wanted for so long is that you're able to pick your glow now. Your icon's glowing color, you're able to differentiate that from like the primary color that you pick. So yeah, that's something I've wanted for literal years. It's not the color wheel that I've, you know, had an idea about. But it's it's a pretty good alternative. Let me just see. Did I complete the side quest just by opening up the cave? Or is there another blockade in there? <laughs> Those rocks didn't know what hit them. You're amazing. Man, this was back when, uh, when Calgara was still threatening the, the village. Oh. Yeah, these side quests were meant to be done so long ago. Well, hell, if I'm 
if I'm doing these side quests so fast, then I'm gonna breeze right through them, right? Right? Chill, dude. I come in peace. Ah. Thanks for helping me keep our food supplies intact. I'll deliver them to the village as soon as I've packed them up. I, th I kind of thought the screen would cut to black and then show him say, Alright, I've packed them all up. Now I'm going to go. So, not much else. Is Could there be a bubble frog in here? There's no check mark. Oh, but duh, there's more path. There's still more to this cave, duh. Man, I spoke too soon. I was like literal milliseconds too soon. Well, I guess I got no choice now but to use up... One of these gloom bows. This is what happens when you you're you're too greedy and you only have good stuff. You have no choice but to use it. Bubble frog's been gotten here, so there's not much else for me to get in this cave. <clears throat> what? One. Okay, it seems like this is a, a side quest for me to just go and do the shrine. And then I just got a report back saying I did the shrine. What else to talk about? Mm. Okay, so let me talk about this before I talk about what if and Spy X Family. So, uh, a couple days ago... Two days, two days in a row, two separate friend groups of mine both wanted to go do escape rooms. So, a couple days ago, like earlier this week, two days in a row, I went out and did escape room with my friends. And the crazy thing is, two separate groups, we managed to decide to do the exact same thing. Two times in a row. Now, I'm not saying the exact same uh, escape room. But what what we ended up doing, like, the plan was the same. We, uh... Well, we didn't grab dinner for the first night. But still, like... We did escape room, and then we hung out somewhere else afterwards. And two nights, with two different friend groups. We, we went to McDonald's. After after we did the escape room, we went to McDonald's. Am I supposed to take a picture? Yeah. Oh, wait. A big circle that spins in the water. Yeah, I need a picture. Do I just take a random picture? Like, does this count? There's no way I could just take a shrine. Take a picture of a shrine from here, right? There's no way. Well, uh, I already did the shrines, so like, yeah, of course not. I don't know which shrine he's talking about. Yeah. What version are, am I on? One point two point one. Uh. 
big circle that spins in the water. Big circle that spins in the water. Can I get more context? Like, what did you say... What did you say when I first talked to you? One of one of Kula's friends said they saw a big swirly circle in the water. Kula can't go looking himself, but that he would like to see that swirly thing. Oh, uh... How you get the champion's tunic from Breath of the Wild. It's very simple. You go into... You go into the throne room in Hyrule Castle, and you light two torches. You can literally get it right at the beginning of the game. You could start the whole game with it. Uh, I, unfortunately, I have to look this up, because I don't want to just run around aimlessly until I figure out what this is, so I gotta, I gotta look up this very simple side quest to see how to do it. Just to not waste time. And besides, these are just side quests, so it's not a big deal if I just spoil what it is I need to do. <sighs> so yeah, two separate nights, we went to two separate escape rooms with two separate friends of groups, friends of groups. Two separate groups of friends. We went to two sep. Oh, wait. This Korok is talking about the giant toilet that was flushed over here at the lake reservoir. Two separate nights with two separate groups of friends. We went to two separate escape rooms. And then afterwards, we went to two separate McDonald's. Like, what are the chances? So the first night... The first, uh, the first of two nights that I went to an escape room with friends, uh, I don't exactly know where we went to. So we did this escape room that was less, you know, trying to solve puzzles, thinking about, like, could this be a hint at a code towards a lock or whatever. It was less of that and more so, if this was a real situation, what would you do, given the resources that are provided? So, let's see, the theme for the first escape room I did, like the story-wise, like, usually escape rooms, they play a video for you before you do the room to give you context. What am I doing? I need to take a picture. I'm rambling and I'm just following the, the icon on the map. So... The, the, the video shown to me before we did the escape room, first of all, it, it was uh, narrated by an AI voice, so nice. Uh, so the story was, you were being interviewed and then gas filled the room, you were unconscious, you woke up, you were in a, in a jail cell with a bunch of other people in jail cells. You can feel you were experimented on because you have like scars or whatever on your body. And then, one day, this other, like, lab experiment person, who was given the name Steven, like, breaks out of his, his uh, jail cell in a rampage. When, the, when the, uh, the cop or the security guard was, uh, was, you know, opening bullets at him, he just would not go down. Eventually, Steven killed the security guard... There was a dead security guard on the floor, and then that triggered the facility to self-destruct within like an hour and 20 minutes, so two hours, I think. Or was it just an hour? Whatever. So you had to escape. You had to escape a jail cell and the entire research facility before the entire place like self-destructs. So that was the theme. And also, we were, we were handcuffed. Like, they literally handcuffed me. They put this, like, fake tattoo of a QR code onto me, but uh, by, by then it's already came off. So we were, it, it was me and four other friends. We were separated into four different, uh, four different jail cells. What we ended up having to do, because there was a dummy, like a, a prosthetic body, dressed as a security guard, like, right out of reach from us, and, you know, we were handcuffed so we couldn't really reach that far 
Uh, so inside, no, no, wait, no. Right in front of the the, the dead security guard was like a baton, a, a a nightstick or whatever, and we had to grab that in order to grab the key off of the dead security guard to let us let ourselves out. But there was nothing for us to use in the jail cells except toilet paper. Each cell had like a tiny little piece of toilet paper, so what we had to do was like scrunch them into balls, throw them to another cell, and then tie them into like a long rope. That way we could kind of shimmy it underneath the, the stick and roll it towards one of us. So then we would use the stick, pick up the keys, and unlock the cells for ourselves. A big circle of swirly sand. Well, that's more obvious. I know where to go to for that. So, uh, and let me tell you, my Walking Dead instincts were telling me there's a dead body here. It is about to reanimate at any moment. We gotta stab it through the head. That was my instinct. My Walking Dead instincts were telling me there's a dead body on the floor. Shouldn't we take care of it? But no, it, it was just it was just a dummy. It was fake. So then we entered this research lab area where you know there was this operating table, there was bloody uh, surgical tools, there was IV bags and everything, like all props, of course. So we had to figure out what to do. So there was also, like, they, they didn't skimp out on the budget. Because there was a legit laptop that they programmed to be used as a prop to escape. So you scan the QR code that was put on you. And then there would be files on, on you know, the, the, the characters that you portray. So there were actually two storylines for us to solve. One is escaping. And two, certain numbers of us would... Like, there would be hints around that some of us were going to turn into mutants, like Steven was in the story. And at the very end, we had to figure out who was mutated, who was going to turn, and who needed, like, a cure injection. None of us focused on that. We all completely forgot about that. Well, I didn't, but, you know, we just chose not to... Not to deal with that, because we were already running out of time. And, you know, we are uh, not exactly... Smart? Well, I'm not smart. They were. <clears throat> so we focus on escaping. So, you know, when we scanned the QR codes that were on us, it showed files of the characters in the story. And it showed, like, lab results, like, stamina, like, 4 out of 10. Intelligence, like, 8 out of 10. It showed that kind of stuff. It showed your profile and everything, like, your name. Your gender, your your age, all that stuff. Like it, it showed you your character's profile. But whatever. Uh, so none of that matters. What we had to do to escape, there was a black light in the room. We had to turn off all the lights, and we had to use the black light to scan around to see hints. Now there was obviously you know stuff purposely put on the walls, like handprints and all that. And when that happened, like, when I was scanning the area with the blacklight, I'm just like, oh man, there's semen everywhere. So obviously I was kidding. So, there were, like, number locks on the door. So we had to use the blacklight to scan, like, what combination of numbers we need to press. So we made it to the next room by unlocking the, the code with, uh... The black light we made it into a supply closet but there was a vent we had to open the vent and literally cl not climb crawl to another room and yes that was a uh, very hard on my knees because it was uh, on a hard solid floor and let me tell you the movies make it look so much easier crawling in real life is not that easy it's certainly not comfortable either and even though it was fake it was pretty scary crawling through like a literal enclosed space that was pretty dark too. Yes, we were given a, a, a flashlight, a flashlight that we just took off of that dead security guard props 
body. But still, it was kind of scary. Oh, wait, was I supposed to do something? Wait, what did you noble know say? I've been cracking my skull trying to remember anything that might help clue us on Princess Zelda. But I'm so much... But so much of my memory is a blur from when I was wearing that weird mask. I did recall one thing, though. When we were mining marbled rock rose on the north side of Death Mountain, the princess said something. She told me not to go near the lizard lakes. But she didn't say why. That's why I was talking to Boss about it. Yo, Sojiro? Have you figured anything out? Huh? A Zonai spirit? Sorry about that. I just kind of- I'm just kind of shocked. I never could have imagined something like that. Oh, right. I guess I never told any of the sages that I found the fifth sage. He says it's almost time to defeat the, the demon king. Yep. <sighs> Who was supposed to talk to him? One brother hunts with the other brothers when... What? One brother hunts what the other brother hides. Two lizards fighting over what's inside. Where should I look? You telling me you're gonna go looking? If you're that, if you're serious, you'll want to head down half, head about halfway up Death Mountain. I'm pretty sure it was the north side. Uh, north side. Yeah, but why head up about halfway? Oh, because this is halfway, dummy. So, uh, there was also this sort of, like, obstacle course for you to get over. It was just really a, really a wall to climb over. Now, my friends are way taller and way more athletic than I am. So, one of them just, like, hopped over with ease. And I'm just, I'm just over there standing, like, like, help me out, please. I, I'm too short. I can barely jump over the wall, let alone climb over it. So, what he had to do was, like, you know, like boost me up listen okay i'm not that tall literally every single friend i went with to do these escape rooms i was the shortest guy in two different friend groups Ugh. so yeah you know the uh, the rules were nice enough to say that if you need assistance a ladder can be provided now how embarrassing would it have been if i was the one person who needed a ladder yeah, the... Hmm. So we had to get to the other side, and there was this, like, weight thing, where to open the door, we need to apply a certain amount of weight. Like, a certain amount of pressure. I'm going the wrong direction. What am I doing? We had to apply a certain amount of pressure and hold it for three seconds. I think my friend figured it out. It was, like, 450... It's not tons. Hell no, it's not 450 tons. 450, like, kilos or whatever. Which required all of us, all five of us, to, like, like really, like, push. And, you know, while that happened, I actually got cut. I got hurt. You see that? I got a cut on my hand. It, you know, it's a small cut, but still, it's a cut nonetheless. I got a cut on my hand from the equipment. But, you know, when... Whenever you do escape rooms, they do make you sign a waiver. Like, if you're injured in any way, I acknowledge that, you know, it's not the the, the, the company's fault or whatever. It's my own fault. Stuff like that. You know, you can't do it unless you sign the waiver. So, we opened the door. There was another prosthetic body in there. And, you know, we were able to get his, like, QR code. And, uh, when we scanned his QR code, I'm just like, what the fuck? Because the, the, the character profile that showed up was Steve Rogers, Captain America. So that's who Steven was. It was Steve Rogers. So in this story, it was Captain America being experimented on. May as well just stand here and heal up. So I was thinking, I was thinking, like, 
Okay, Steve Rogers is being experimented on. And there's mutations that, you know, we need to find a cure for. Or at least figure out who is going to mutate and needs a cure. So I'm like, is that the story for this? Some sort of government facility captured Steve Rogers, was tr experimenting on him, trying to recreate the Super Soldier Serum, but inadvertently created mutants. I'm not kidding you, that was the escape room. Where, in the story of the escape room, Steve Rogers was being experimented on. And, uh, he gone berserk. That's why, like, uh, he, and he was kind of mutated. That's why when he busted out, being shot a ton of times didn't affect him. I know this sounds like I'm making it up, but I, I'm serious, I'm not. The story was that Steve Rogers was being experimented on. What's crazy is... You know, in the, uh, the infinite possibility that is the Marvel multiverse, that, that is a, a possibility that Steve Rogers was captured and experimented on, probably to try to recreate the Super Soldier Serum, and, uh, in the process, mutants were created. Okay, I'm gonna look this up as well, just to not waste any more time. I'm going to take this opportunity to wipe the ice. So, uh... We needed... So there was a severed hand next to Steve Rogers. And we needed... Oops. Oh, shit. We needed that hand to, like, you know, fingerprint and open the door to let us escape. But this time, the lock was different. Uh, I should also mention that when we escaped the prison cells, we needed to lift up the the dead prosthetic officer and use his hand to like scan the fingerprint to open the door. The same thing was for another puzzle, but first of all, the hand was severed off and was in a totally different room, which we had to open the room to get to. And, uh, after we got the hand, and we got to the room that we had to crawl through the vent to get to, it wasn't just as simple as scanning the, the fingerprint on the hand. It was also, like, <clears throat> it was also, like, uh, we needed to say the name of the supervisor in the story, like, clearly. <clears throat> And the way to find out the name was the the dummy had a phone in the hand. But we had to first figure out the password to open the phone. On the back of the phone, there was this picture of a, of a kid having a birthday. And I think the date uh, of the picture taken, it said, was October 5th, 2017. But that's not the date of birth. We see that in the picture, there was like five candles. So, 2017 minus 5, that's 2012. So we had to put in put in October 5th, 2012, and that unlocked the phone. And then we had to find out the supervisor's last name. So on all the like patient records, it said Supervisor Nina, but it didn't say the last name. So we had to dig through the phone. First of all, the phone was like an old-ass Nokia phone. And, uh, well, I, I didn't know how to navigate it. I was low-key, like, using it as a touch screen. Like, how does how do I get this thing to, to work? Listen, okay, we had, like, five minutes left, and I was panicking. So, <laughs> I, I didn't really know how to use a Nokia phone in that moment. Oh, of course, this is what I get. And I'm not joking you, like, once again, this sounds made up, but I'm not joking you when I tell you what kind of names were in that phone. <laughs> when I saw the names, I'm just like, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and then there was also other names like Peter Parker. I'm just thinking, there's no way 
those president names were not influenced by the AI president meme. There is no way. So, you know, regardless. Oh, that's it. It's already done. I don't have to re re report this back to the boss. But yeah, uh, the name, literally, the, the phone literally had the names Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden. It's the funniest thing ever. Along with, you know, Peter Parker. But what I noticed was inside the phone's contact list, there was a lot of names with the last name Harris. So I, I kind of pieced together, like, maybe that's the last name. Nina Harris. Since, you know, a lot of last names, probably like family members. And that was right. So we scanned the fingerprint, we said Nina Harris as the name, and we got out. And we escaped. We beat the escape room. Now, normally, we had like maybe 30 seconds left before the facility self-destructed. So we still would have died since we would not have had enough time to get clear of the explosion. Hey, you mind? That's mine. I wasn't trying to talk to you. I'm not trying to talk to you. I'm trying to talk to you. What? Another Hylian? No service for Hylians right now. No exceptions. You can blame this guy. He went and let a precious rock roast go to waste. So until somebody brings me a rock roast, I'm not offering nothing to Hylians. Yes, rock girls. Best thing since sliced rock. What's stopping Gorons from just like biting a rock that's randomly just sitting out there? It's the most delectable of rocks, crucial to Goron survival. You know, that's like that's like human saying uh, uh, roast beef or like an entire rib roast is crucial for survival. I laid. I laid cart tracks to the cave so we'd be able to pull in a big haul of it. But it's risky, ever, even for us Gorons to try to gather it. Anyway, I've got nothing to feed you Hylians with, so scram. The champion's tunic doesn't have the leather on it? Yeah. You're back from work? What's up? I'm just talking about the escape rooms I did a couple days ago. I just talked about the the one we did. You know how the phone had Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden in it. And how it was actually all about Steve Rogers. So I need to follow the, the mine tracks. So next to it, actually afterwards, we did mini golf. But because I hadn't eaten yet, I was absolutely starving and there was a... Boston Pizza next to it. But, you know, everyone else wasn't really down to eat like that. They didn't really want to, you know, eat that much. So what they wanted to do was maybe sit down and just wait for my fat ass to completely down an entire pizza. And then, you know, that's expensive. Sitting down at a restaurant is, is expensive. So they didn't really want to do that, so what I suggested was, what if we go somewhere cheap like McDonald's? And that's exactly what they did. We all went to McDonald's to eat instead. My knees are still dead from us, from us, um, from the Among Us venting. Yeah, the movies make it a lot, look a lot easier, don't they? <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, uh, when we finished the escape room, my friends were like, Bro, you were gassy today. <laughs> like, you burps how many times? And then you were just like, Bro, that's normal. You know how many times he burps on stream? Well, excuse me for being human with natural human body functions. One of them being the circulation of gas. Would you have rather it come out the front end or the back end, hmm? Why is there a staircase in here? Wait a second. 
And why is the screen so dark? I need to turn up the brightness. Is that a lizard? Yes! Ah, I need this to to get back over. Can't I just uh can't I just use Ultra Hand to get this over? So yeah, that was the first escape room I did, and and uh, that's when I got that shiny snow runt. It was in the car ride over there. Crazy thing is, like, in the car ride over, we took one car there, it was five of us in a car, and uh, my genius of a friend suggested that my fat ass sat in the middle. I'm just like, bruh, you know how much, you know how much, like, space I take up? It's a horrible idea for me to be in the middle. You realize, like, if, if he makes a sharp turn, one of you guys is getting crushed. And let me tell you, it was so uncomfortable, because I had, like, no leg space. My leg was in a permanent position, where it's like, I tried to move it to get more comfortable, it was not working. I tried so hard to move my leg to get it more comfortable, it did not happen. I just had to endure the car ride until we got there. Here, let me let me give you some boiled rock roast. You're gonna miss that. Uh, you're gonna miss that seared crust. You know, you're gonna you're gonna miss out on some of that Maillard reaction when it comes to cooking meat. But then again, this isn't meat; it's rock. Wonder how Gorons would feel if you were to sous vide one of these rock roasts. It's like, my goodness, why is it so tender? Normally you have to crunch on it to really bite through, but damn, it's it's like melting in my mouth. And then a normal person tries it, it's like, bruh, it's still a pile of rocks. What do you mean tender? Here you go, bitch. Here's a rock roast that even defies the laws of gravity. Ooh. Hey, that! Ooh. Now that's a rock roast. Hey, you! <sighs> hey, chef, make this, uh, this makes us square? Mm. So long as I've got rock roasts, you only get one. Not roasts. Roast. You only get one. I've got no complaints. Because you missed out on the, the JBBQ? Well, excuse uh -huh. me if I had to work. And you guys said it was nothing really that special anyways. Yeah, they went... Uh, the group of friends of mine, they went on... They, they basically hung out the entire day before I joined for the uh, the escape room and mini golf afterwards. <coughs> but you know, my mom and sister just got back. They're still jet lagged. So even if I wanted to take the day off, I couldn't. Because there's a chance that they would have like <coughs> halfway through the day got too tired and went home. Stuff like that. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. When my friends came over to pick me up from work, it was just me there. Because my family already left. Because they were too jet lagged and too tired to last the whole day. So excuse me for not being able to miss out on work that one day just to go to JBBQ for you guys. <laughs> this isn't meat or a rock, but it's the rarest thing I own. Okay then. Ah. Have you heard about the rumored beast? If that creature's really out there, I'm gonna find it find out if it's edible. Are you talking about a Pokemon? Hold on, what'd you just say? When you love meat <laughs> Figure I'll hit the stable to ask around for leads. 
By the way, you're in, uh, we're not strangers anymore, buddy. If you see me out there in the wilds, give me a shout. Until then, take care. We stood outside your store, and it took you five minutes to realize we were standing out there. Yeah. I had to look up and then see a, a familiar face. What was actually funny is that that night when our friend dropped me off, in the car ride... In the car ride of him driving me back to my place, we talked about Geometry Dash, like, did you see the trailer for the new update? And then, literally that night, he dropped me off, he got home, and he texted, Yo, the new update is out. You know, we were reminiscing, reminiscing on the fact that the two of us, we, we basically met over playing Geometry Dash back in high school. And then, what a coincidence, we we meet up again for like a year, a year of not speaking. We meet up, hang out, we talk about Geometry Dash, and then le literally that night, like maybe an hour later, he texts me like, yo, the new update is out. So anyways, that was, uh, that was the first night of room escaping so the second night let's see second night was with a different group of friends first we went to dinner uh, we went to a restaurant that was not even five minutes away from outside of where I work and surprisingly enough I never ate there before in 20 years passing by that restaurant for like 20 years this was the first time I ate there Ain't that crazy? Anyways, so I made the mistake of ordering what I ordered because, uh, I, you know, I didn't want anything too filling, but what I got was not filling in the slightest. So my friends, they ordered stuff like the uh, chicken fried rice, curry beef, uh, stir fry. You know, they ordered all this like huge, like filling meals and the portions were actually pretty big so it's a pretty good deal given the price it was like $12 for a fried rice and it was a really big portion like I'm talking really big portion yeah I'm gonna look this one up as well see what I ordered because I ate something not long before I went to dinner with them so I didn't want something too filling so what I ordered was the uh, the pork chop burger. I was expecting it not to be that big. Well, it was not big at all. Matter of fact, it was just not big at all. So when I ordered it, funny thing was, I was the one who waited the longest for my food. The fried rice, the stir fry, the curry beef, all of those came out real quick. But I, I sat there waiting for like 20 minutes for my food. And then when it came... It was this, like, puny little burger, and uh, there was also potato chips on the side. When the waiter put down the plate, like, all the chips spilled and flew onto the table. Yeah. Nice experience. And then I finished it in, like, four bites. So it was not filling in the slightest. Once again, I was hoping for something not too filling... But what I got was not filling, period. Was it good? Sounds like a no. GG's is, GG's is over when the slow eater gets his food last. Like I said, I finished it. I was the first to finish it. That tells you how small the portion was. Uh, so... Oh, wait a second. This is just telling me how to get the side quest. In order to actually do the side quest. Did I even do this yet? Or did I do all of it yet? Okay, I, I already... One of them's in here, but I've already been in here. So let's see if I actually got this yet. <coughs> see, now I don't know which ones I've already done or not. I gotta go in and check if I've gotten it yet. Actually, doesn't the game just tell me? Wait a second. 
you know, on the bright side, I didn't throw up at anyone's car this time. Because the last time, me and this group of friends... Okay, I found two pieces of fierce deity armor. No, this is just telling me where to get the side quest. Okay, there's an... I'm betting I already got the one here. But, did I get the one here? Uh, here. I mean, I already been here, so I'm betting I already did. Where's the third location at? Skull Lake. Great. Now I don't know which ones I've gotten, because I've been to all three locations already. I, I kind of feel like I haven't gotten the one here. Because I came here just to do a boss. We'll see. <clears throat> Bring a paper bag with you next time. You guys remember that story? I told you about that gross gas station story. I threw up in my friend's car, and then we stopped at a gas station for me to throw up again and also take a dump there. Yeah. Yeah, The la when that happened, it was also doing an escape room. So, luckily, I didn't throw up in anyone's car this time. I mean, I drove myself, which is arguably worse. Because, you know, if I'm the one driving, and uh, suddenly I need to blow some chunks, well, that's uh, not exactly the smartest or safest thing. That's not exactly the best combination when it comes to me operating a motorized vehicle. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about that after. So this escape room was two hours long. This other escape room I did. It was a western theme. I think the, the setting was like, it's 1855. There's a bank that two groups of bandits are trying to rob. Blah, 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 blah. So there was eight of us. We were split off into two groups. And each of us were assigned a character. My character's name was Gravestone. And the description I got, first of all, I saw it said 6 foot 11. And I'm just like, that's all I need to know. <laughs> and then my friend tells me, tells me that his, his character's description is like 8 feet tall. I'm just like, man, you can't let me have anything, can you? Like, that's all I needed to know. Now, one of the workers at the escape room place, he was one of the actors, one of the, uh, you know, NPCs that were helping us along the way. So he dressed up in this, like, cowboy attire. He came into the setting and was just like, all right, gents, who here is doing what? Or whatever he said. Like, kudos to him. Like, he actually memorized an entire long-ass script. And I do not have the stamina for this. So he went around telling us to like, all right, introduce y'all selves. So we all had to like find our pictures, find our characters and introduce ourselves so we know which characters we're playing. And what I said was like, I'm Gravestone and <laughs> I'm six foot 11. That's all I cared about. Cause honestly, that's all I read. My character's description, all I read was six foot 11 and that's all I needed to know. So my character, Gravestone, I think that was his name, or was it Grave Robber? Whatever, it was Grave something. Whatever, regardless, my character's like whole shtick was he robs graves. So we had to figure out how to escape the room, and then we had to, uh, you know, rob the bank. Why is my whole screen shaking? Uh, so, basically, in the other room, there was this, like, entire, like, toy train set up with magnets and whatever, and we had to do this, like, specific order of operation on getting the trains to their destinations. Like, there was hints and, and descriptions and everything on the walls 
that we had to figure out, but we had like five minutes. And then by the time the time ends, the uh, the dude working there, he came in and like on a piece of paper, read out loud how to do it. He's like, all right, red train goes here, then there. Blue train goes here. White train goes there. Green train goes here. I'm just like, bro, we never would have figured that out. How do I get up here? How did I get up here before? Because I don't have the stamina. I probably need to climb higher before I'm able to jump. Imagine being 6 foot 11 and still being the shortest in the group. <sighs> you know, it's not easy in life when, you know, you, you always hear the saying, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. And then literally behind me, all my friends are everyone I have to worry about. So yeah, we had to uh, make the trains go to certain locations, and I was just like, bro, we never would have figured that out. Within the time limit, we never were, we were never going to figure that out. Like, it was so convoluted as well. It was so complicated. You know, obviously, the guy working there, he had to write it down, like, like hell if he was going to memorize all that. So imagine we, a bunch of idiots, had to genuinely solve that ourselves. But that wasn't the end of the escape room. We were only given 120 minutes, right? Yeah, I think so. Or were, No, I think it was 80 minutes. No, 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 80 minutes. We, we were given 80 minutes to start. And then, you know, we, we didn't finish in time. So he just came in and helped us, and then it was on to the second part of the escape room, which was robbing the bank. So, you know, split off into two groups. We had puzzles to solve to, in order to get into the safe deposits and the vaults. The other group actually got some treasure. They actually did some stealing. <coughs> My group, we couldn't even solve the first puzzle. It was so complicated, so complex. Like... If my friends, who are actually, you know, smart, and actually were solving a bunch of stuff throughout the night, if they couldn't solve it, what, what chance do you think my stupid ass could have solved anything? I tried. I really tried. While they were solving the other stuff, I'm just like, what if this is the solution? What if I did this? Like, I, I was just, like, letting them solve the other stuff while I was just trying to find another path like maybe this is it while they're all focusing on that i tried to help out by doing something else we still achieved nothing in the end we were given 25 minutes to solve the puzzles and rob the bank we <laughs> robbed shit we achieved nothing and the uh the worker's character he was so disappointed he's just like how much did you how much did y'all folks steal it's like nothing 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 at all. It's like... So anyways, the story was like... Uh, the character that the, the worker was playing, whoever's team actually stole, they would join his bandit, his, his group of bandits. And the other group, well, he was just like, take off his hat, my condolences. Because he was uh, saying, the group that didn't win would be locked inside of the bank vault, and then the bank would be burned down, so essentially we'd be killed. So yeah, we lost. <laughs> because we couldn't solve a damn thing. Don't you hit my seed! Stamina food? Nah. I feel a sneeze coming. Man, the moment I take my take my headset off, of course I don't have to sneeze anymore. 
And then, just like clockwork, after we finished the escape room, we once again went to McDonald's. I tell you, I was exhausted both nights. I came home, I showered, and I immediately went to went straight to bed. All right, so that's enough about talking about the escape rooms. Let me okay before we talk about the next thing. Let me just show you guys some stuff, cause uh, if you guys remember. A couple parts ago, I said that my sister was texting me pictures while she was in Hong Kong. And, uh, remember this? This Spider-Man? And if you look around, actually, like, you can tell this is very much Spider-Verse stuff. Like, if, if I turn the box here, you can see that's spectacular Spider-Man right there. And you can also see the back, like, the other sets. You see that? Ultimately, you can see here, I decided to go with the Scarlet Spider one here, and whoever these two are. This was on the other side of the planet, and now it's in my hands. And you know what? That's not the only thing that they got me. Remember these blind boxes that my sister got me? You can see I got this Iron Man 3 one here. And you can see the back, like the options I can get. So not only this, but also this right here, this uh, Spider-Man No Way Home one. I hope to God whatever's in here is not Mysterio, because I hated Mysterio. Especially, like, God, I hated what they did with Mysterio in this film. They completely, like, botched the character. But that's not all. Uh, my sister also got me a couple of these uh, SpongeBob things, like whatever this is. Like I'm sure if I open this, you can see in the back, you can barely see. Like I'm guessing this one is SpongeBob, so I'll. Get, yeah, whatever this is. And then this also egg, this Spongebob egg that has like little Lego Spongebob inside. Yeah, I dropped that. My sister also got me this uh, Spider-Man hat. Nice. And uh, whoever this is, who is this? Like... Who is who is this? I've seen this character tons of times. Who is this? See, instead of this thing being like wind up teeth. There's a name behind here. Pinocchio. This ain't the Pinocchio I know. Was Pinocchio always spelled with two C's? I don't know who this character is. I'm sure some of you guys know. Who is this? Anyways, enough of that. Let me tell you guys a quick story real quick before we move on. So, a couple days ago, uh, early in the morning... Early in the morning when I was getting ready for work, I felt like there was something in my mouth. Pause on that. <clears throat> but on in all seriousness, I, I felt like there was maybe like something stuck on the roof of my mouth. Maybe like hair or pieces of dust or whatever. Or hell, it could have been something left over from the dinner before. I didn't know. It just felt like there was something stuck to the roof of my mouth. The roof? The roof of my mouth. <clears throat> so, I grabbed my toothbrush. I grabbed my toothbrush and I just like brushed the top of my mouth. Pause on this. Yeah, I just grabbed my toothbrush and I just brushed 
the roof of my mouth to see if I can remove whatever was stuck on my mouth. I used a flashlight l to look into my mouth, and the roof of my mouth was bleeding. So I guess it wasn't like anything stuck on the roof of my mouth, but rather like maybe warts on the roof of my mouth. I suppose that's what I get for eating an entire XL burn, uh, not burnt, an entire XL fried chicken the day before, like myself. Let's see, did I get this? Yes, of course I did. <coughs> then what two didn't I get? Oh, you know what? Oh, you know what? Now that I see it, obviously that's the one I didn't get. Damn! I just wasted all that time. Obviously, this is the one I didn't get, now that I see it. Okay, let's talk about the actual good stuff. So first, I'm gonna talk about Spy X Family. I only saw one episode. I'm behind like two episodes right now. I watched Season 2, Episode 10. I have not seen episodes 11 or 12 yet since as of this moment, those ones are out, but I haven't seen them yet. I also got curious. I remembered yesterday that wasn't there supposed to be a Spy X Family movie coming out? And I remember seeing it was supposed to come out in December. So yesterday, on December 22nd, yesterday, I looked up Spy X Family Code White release date and then it literally said December 22nd and I just went Woo! yeah baby that's what I'm with that's what I've been waiting for that's what it's all about so I just coincidentally looked up when it would release on its release day I have not seen it yet so you know I'll talk about it next time I swear to god I freaking like unintentionally looked up when the release date is on the release date. Ooh. <sighs> Damn. Really wish I could take this. I mean, I still could. I don't have a gloom sword on gloom sword. Damn, I only have these. Ah uh, man, as much as I would like as I would like to take it, I probably shouldn't. Is it here I need to go through? No. Okay, where is it? I need to find a spot with a red carpet, like so. I did not mean to fall. Well, it didn't mean to fall yet. <sighs> so, Spikes Family Season 2, Episode 10. This episode was great for half the episode. This episode was basically the fallout slash, like, continuation or the resolution, I should say. The finale to the cruise ship arc of the storyline. So finally, we see Yor reunite with the family. We see them actually, you know, act like a family on vacation. They're on this, like, resort. This, uh, uh, you know, this island resort. And yes, my voice did just crack. We see them on this island resort. They're having fun. Lloyd, once again, is, you know, just being a spy and not truly enjoying himself. We see Lloyd be an absolute professional, just in, in, in life in general. Anya was building a sandcastle, and uh, Lloyd built an entire, like, sand architecture. 
Like, he built an entire, entire freaking, like, damn near life-size, detailed, fully detailed, sandcastle. We see Lloyd surf with ease. It's like, man, th th this guy can do everything. Lloyd is literally a god amongst men. Like, he can do anything. We see them literally be a family. The funny part was like when they, when they, uh, uh, when they first got on the island, Anya was like, was like, Papa, you, fathers normally would now like, like jump for joy and do things with their kids and whatever. And Lloyd was just with a straight face, like just hopping like, yes, I'm having so much fun. Let us have some fun right now. <laughs> And then he sees his, you know, he sees his wife standing there waiting and he just blushes with embarrassment like, oh shit, did she just see me do that? So we finally see them be a family. And then, you know, Yor and Anya, they're both so tired, they literally collapse into Lloyd's arms. And he, as like, you know, a juggernaut, a walking testosterone... Literally just carries both of them back to the cruise ship. Not gonna lie, you know how strong you have to be? You know how much energy, strength, stamina, just, you know, overall, you know how much you need to be able to carry, like, a fully grown woman and a child? Like, down a freaking docks towards a cruise ship? You know how, how much energy that'll take? Wasn't there a Gleok here? <coughs> why is it- oh, that's right. I was about to ask, why is it cold here? That's because I'm on a sky island. So... The vacation's over. They return home. And, well, this was the scene my friend was waiting for me to react at. Like, the the scene that he was waiting, waiting for my reaction on was this scene. When Yori was, like, so cheerful that his sister is returning from her trip. He opens his locker and we see just in detail how many photos of his sister... He has in his locker, and I'm just like, DISGUSTING! It's like, God, you have that many pictures of your sister in your locker? Bro, that is disgusting. And, you know, like, I, I damn near the type of photos he had of her, it's like, Bruh, you are vile. Did I mention to you guys that I don't like Yuri as a character? You know, when I told my friend this, who also watches the show, watches the anime, he's like, Bro, what? You don't like Yuri? Let me explain why I don't like Yuri. Uh, number one, the biggest reason, the man wants to marry his sister. That is, uh, you know, sickening. Uh, two, he's, uh, he's not wrong about this, but, like, what if he was wrong about this, you know? In Yuri's eyes, Lloyd is, you know, not a secret agent, not Yuri's arch nemesis. To Yuri, Lloyd is just, you know, a stand-up awesome guy that his sister married. Without telling him. So, in Yuri's eyes, Lloyd is just a loving husband, a good father, like, like a, a, a nice guy, a good guy. Not abusive, not anything bad, just a good guy, a good handsome guy, might I add, that his sister married. 
And he doesn't like that. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately, Yuri's correct, even though he doesn't know it. He's correct that, you know, Lloyd is uh, not who he says he is. And the fact that Lloyd is, in fact, his arch nemesis. But, like, what if he wasn't? What if Lloyd really was just a stand-up guy that his sister married? He doesn't like that. He he wants his sister to divorce a great guy so he can fucking... You know, I'm not going to say that. So he can just, like, marry his own sister. So it's like, yeah, I don't like Yuri. Disgusting! Anyways, the... Side quest for this is in the Colosseum, but there's kind of a Gleok operating that space right now. So I was like, what do, what do you expect me to do here? So, second part of the episode is like, uh, eh. It's kind of the fallout of the cruise arc, where everyone is just bragging or whatever. They're talking about the trip. You know, Lloyd, the, even the handler was like, So, how'd you enjoy your vacation? Lloyd basically didn't. Even the boss was like, Yeah, you could treat this as a vacation. But he didn't. It's like, come on, man. And then your, you know, she was giving these, like, Skeleton keychains as souvenirs to her friends, her co-workers. And then Anya. Well, she was just trying to brag about it at school, but she kept on getting one-upped by everyone. So she makes up these lies and then gets made fun of. Listen, we've all been there. We've all been humiliated as kids, laughed at by the entire class. Or at least I was. You know, a bunch of popular kids back then, they didn't have to experience that. But losers like me, oh yeah, we definitely did. I definitely did. I certainly was, like, pointed and laughed at by the entire class before. That's an exaggeration, but, like, still, I was embarrassed by the entire class before. So, it's not a good feeling. It is not a good feeling in the slightest. What am I doing? Heading in the completely wrong direction. What's wrong with me? It's funny, though, because when, uh, you know, Anya was basically telling her parents, like, I lied because I wanted attention, and then, uh, everyone was just telling her lying is bad, when every single person in the room is a liar. Well, then the episode ends. Well, talked about that episode. I haven't seen anything else yet, so we'll talk about that next time when I have watched more. Now let's talk about some Marvel stuff. First of all, I saved this for when I was going to talk about the What If and other Marvel stuff. So, since the last time I played this, Jonathan Majors has officially been fired from Marvel. He is no longer playing Kang the Conqueror, He Who Remains, Victor Timely, you know, Rama Tut. Any other variant, Jonathan Majors is finished as any Kang the Conqueror variant in the MCU. He has officially been found guilty of assault and whatever else. So he is no longer Kang the Conqueror. He's been fired. We don't know what they're going to do moving forward as of right now. We don't know if they're going to recast Kang or just introduce a whole new villain. We don't know yet. Oh, it's a Blood Moon, so that means we got a Gleok to fight soon. Not this Gleok. Can I just, like, maybe put on my stealth armor and just completely... Completely, uh, you know, sneak around this Gleok? And yet... Yeah, I'm not going to read that out loud, because, uh, trust me, bro, wasn't really much of anything. 
No, Gleok. Oh, shit. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. So this right here, I need to get this into your hands. There you go. So yeah, uh, Jonathan Majors is fired now, so we don't know yet what exactly is going to happen with Kang. So that also means that Avengers 5 is no longer Avengers the Kang Dynasty, which I'll be honest, kind of sucks. I was kind of, I was really looking forward to that, since you know, they've been building up Kang this entire time, only for Jonathan Majors to be found guilty and then being fired. Well, <sighs> you know, you, you guys remember when Disney fired Johnny Depp? All I can say is at least this time they waited for a verdict to be reached. They waited for the trial to finish before they did any sort of firing. You know, they actually fired him, like, an hour after he had been officially, like, been announced to be found guilty. So they were ready. They were ready. <laughs> you know, the finger was on the trigger. They were ready to announce. Yeah, he's... We're, we're, we're dropping him. We're not- we're no longer working with them. <laughs> so anyways... Yep, Jonathan Majors is fired, no more Kang. Unless they recast, of course. Okay, so... The third one is over at the Thundra Plateau. Hmm. Huh. And I'm trying to see what the hell exactly do I even need to do here. I see something along the lines of like building a really long stick. Let me just see, what do I need to do? What is even happening? Huh? Let me look at this. On Hyrule Ridge in Ludfo's land, ruins sleep beneath the towering mushroom trees. Connect the southern column's midday shadow to the northern. Okay. Okay, I can do that. Alright, so let's talk about what if, shall we? What if Season 2, Episode 1, this one is what if Nebula joined this, the uh, Nova Corps? If you watch the episode, the uh, true Nexus event was actually more of more like what if Ronin killed Thanos? That was more the Nexus event. <clears throat> now first of all, I find it really hard to believe Ronin the Accuser would be able to kill Thanos, especially without the Power Stone. Without any infinity stone. But uh he's he's capable, as we find out. He is indeed capable. 
So because of that Nexus event, Ronin killing Thanos, that, you know, uh, Nebula, no, wait, no, Ronin would, like, not announce his plan to Nebula, Ronin would, you know, not, uh, not threaten Thanos the way he did, so he would not announce his plan to Nebula. So, Ronan would just, out of nowhere, attack Xandar, causing Xandar to panic, causing Xandar to put up a, a planet-wide shield that would last for 50 years. And then, five years later, Nebula is, you know, enlisted into the Nova Corps. And, well, she's basically a cop. This episode was very much like Blade Runner. Hold on, let me see that again. Did it say Northern? Connect the Southern Column to the Northern. So I need to connect this one's shadow to that. And let's see. To do so... Can I cut these down? Shit, I don't exactly have a sharp weapon. Damn. Okay, hold on. Let me take a look. Where do I get the wood source? <sighs> Am I actually able to cut down these mushrooms? No way. I am! Or may- wait. Unfortunately, I have to sacrifice the Gloom Club, so... L. I am able to cut these down. You know how many, like, fungus spores were probably released with, when cutting these down? So in the story, Yondu was killed. Uh, we actually don't even find out who killed Yondu. So then we have to find the killer, blah blah blah. We find out that, uh... Uh... Well, there's actually not that much, like, important stuff to talk about. Obviously, no Thanos, you know, no Ronin. Like, no Ronin the way that it played out, so... Peter Quill would not have met the other Guardians of the Galaxy. And also, this is five years later. So, this would have taken place in 2019, since the initial Guardians film took place in 2014. So, five years after the planet was completely sealed off is 2019. That also means no Thanos meant no Infinity War in Endgame. So, that means on Earth, the Avengers are still split up due to the events of Civil War. That would mean, uh, man, that that really could cascade into a whole bunch of other events, couldn't it? You know, around that point, Br uh, Bruce and Thor would have left Sakaar, but they would not have been intercepted by, you know, the uh, the the. Uh, Sanctuary 2. So, technically, in that timeline, in this timeline, the Asgardians and Loki would have made it to Earth. I wonder, is this long enough? Anyways, regardless. Uh... <sighs> so it was actually Nova Prime who recruited and gave Nebula a chance, despite the fact that she was a member of the Black Order. 
so whatever stuff and stuff and stuff it was actually interestingly enough nebula breaks yon rog out of prison on xandar not the kiln on xandar that means during the events of guardians volume one yon rog was somewhere on xandar Not gonna lie, like, when I heard Yon rog I'm like, who was that again? I had to look it up. It was Jude Law's character in the first Captain Marvel film. He's like, ah, I knew, I knew that name sounded familiar. Not gonna lie, it even kind of looked like Jude Law. But, you know, it turns out, like, the uh, Nova Prime, Betrayed, The Oath... Betrayed the Novacor uh, Oath. Because, you know, being, uh, being locked inside of a planet for, like, five years, I guess I'll do that to you. I'm sure the people of Earth would not feel any different if uh, a, a protective dome around the planet were to prevent us from leaving the planet. It's like, okay... We were likely not going to leave the planet anytime soon anyways. Alright, let's see if that's a big enough shadow. I mean, should I just wait? I need it to be like noon. I would have to build a fire, then wait for noon when I could just wait a couple minutes. So, stuff and stuff, Nebula joins forces with, uh, Korg, you know, voiced by Taika Waititi, with, uh, Howard the Duck, still voiced by Seth Green. Uh, who else did he team up with? I don't remember, I don't think, Me I don't remember if Meek was there. No, Groot. It was Groot. There was no Rocket. And, you know, Drax was a cameo in the episode. So, whatever. They stop Nova Prime. Uh, and, well, not much else. Episode 2 was more better. Episode 2, What If Peter Quill Attacked the Avengers? Or whatever the title was. So... The biggest Nexus event in this episode was one that we wondered for a very long time. What if Yondu actually delivered Peter Quill to uh, Ego? And now we finally learn what would happen. So, Peter Quill would get his powers, but he would want to go back to Earth. So he takes uh, Ego's little pod thing. And then... Basically, Peter Quill uses his powers and just creates a whole ton of havoc whole ton of chaos to where a certain younger or earlier group of characters would have to form together. So this would include a young Hank Pym's Ant-Man, a uh, uh, Bill Foster's, a young Bill Foster's Goliath. We would get King T'Chaka's Black Panther. We would get uh, Wendy, what the hell was her last name? Wendy Law something. Shit, what was her name again? I have to look it up. <sighs> Wendy Lawson, that's it. I knew it was Law something. Wendy Lawson from the Captain Marvel film, a rather odd selection, if I might say. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, why is a young Wendy Lawson kind of bad though? And then they were kind of brought together by Peggy Carter and Howard Stark. There was also the Winter Soldier, who I love the detail that Peggy and Howard would actually recognize Bucky. 
they were saying like I heard rumors, but that it actually looks so much like him. It looks like Bucky. Howard was the one who had to say like the Bucky we knew is long gone. Because at this point, they still don't know that Steve Rogers is still alive, just frozen in the Arctic. So this group of like bootleg, like too early Avengers, f comes together. You know, I kind of love the detail. Like, okay, first of all, I did not expect Thor to be in the episode. That was a real big surprise to me. See, Thor showed up because Peter had already basically destroyed all of the other nine realms. Like, eight of the nine realms besides Midgard or Earth. So, uh, Thor had to come down and intervene. Is there no Bubble Frog here? There has to be. Aha! So it was actually uh, Hope Van Dyne, or you know Hope Pym, and her connection with Peter that actually like you know calms him down and whatever. I love this detail too. So it was uh, Thor who brings the uh, the the eagle's seedlings or whatever the seed of power or something like that to the attention of these guys, and Howard Stark. You know, like father, like son. Howard Stark suggested, why don't we just stick this down the garbage disposal and call it a day? That's exactly what Tony said in Infinity War regarding the the time stone. It's like, like father, like son. I guess we know where Tony learned it, I guess. Uh, and also, I think this is the first time we've actually seen this. We got a what if exclusive design because we have not seen Goliath's design in the MCU yet we have only seen Bill Foster played by Lawrence Fishburne but we have not seen Lawrence, Lawrence Fishburne in the Goliath suit nor have we seen like basically the character of Goliath grow big yet so we actually saw for the first time Goliath in the MCU he kind of has like an Ant-Man suit, only instead of like primarily red with black accents, it's blue. It's like, it's white with blue accents. And there was also a nod to the Ant-Man and the Wasp film, where, you know, uh, ah. Scott and Bill were measuring lengths, you know what I mean? And I think Bill said he, he, his record was like, what, 21 feet? Or like 26? Something like that. And that, we got a call back to that in this episode. That this was his record. Should I take that Gleok on now? Sure, why not? Also, let me check. How many of those do I have? How many guts? Hmm. I have eight, so I need two more. One more after this fight. So, uh... Peter defeats Ego, ultimately. You know, Ego constantly makes a grave mistake of revealing to his son that he killed Meredith, killed Peter's mother, but he didn't say it the way we would, we expected him to say it. He said the same things along the lines of like, 
if she was alive, then my very purpose, the expansion, would not continue or whatever. But he did not say it broke my heart to put that tumor in her head. Peter just kind of pieces together that his father killed his mother without him flat out saying it. <sighs> Whatever, they defeat uh, Ego, but only his uh, physical form, his celestial presence is still out there. So then this like way too early version of the Avengers forms, consisting of Peggy and Howard Stark, consisting of Thor, Ant-Man, Goliath, uh, Wendy... Uh, Wendy uh, Lawson, whatever her code name is, you know, uh, the chocolate Black Panther, but it also has Hope Van Dyne and Peter Quill, young versions of them. Oh, that's a timer on my phone. You know what? Let me charge my other 3DS as well. Or rather, my friends. Because mine is fully charged. <sighs> I find it interesting how these first two episodes, in universe, neither of them have or will have the Guardians of the Galaxy. Episode 1, you know, Peter never met the other ones. Well, he may have met them briefly, but they never actually formed the group. And in this episode, well, Peter... Peter was, you know, never taken in by Yondu, which means he was never let down that path where he would eventually meet the other Guardians. Hell, Peter just isn't in space! He came back to Earth at a young age. So, no Guardians of the Galaxy in both of these timelines. Let me just do one last thing before we start. Actually, I think I may need three more Gliok Guts, not two. start. So, uh, I wonder if there's going to be like an overarching arching storyline with this season, kind of like season one did, where it was like an anthology season, but then all the characters came together <laughs> to defeat like Infinity Ultron. I wonder if that's going to be the case again. Uh, don't forget, one of the Season 2 episodes was supposed to be an episode from Season 1, but they pushed it back for whatever reason. I don't think there's really a particular order to watch Season 2 in. Like, you could watch it immediately after Season 1, or you could wait until, like, basically release order. <coughs> Because, you know, this could be immediately after Season 1, where the Watcher, after defeating Ultron, could have immediately been like, Alright, let's look at more stories, shall we? Like, maybe the Watcher didn't take a break for a couple years. Okay, this is already off to a not good start. Let's try this again. 
Well, that does mean I need to pick up the pose again, but that's fine. I can do that after. I need water! Ugh! In case you don't know and you're wondering why am I fighting a Gleok right now, I need the Gleok guts to upgrade an armor. And only King Gleoks drop Gleok guts. And this is the quickest King Gleok for me to get to. So every time a Blood Moon happens, I have to come down and fight it. That way I can get the guts to upgrade the armor. Yo, 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 Calm down. Calm down! Okay. Come on, where's that third head? Uh-oh. Great, that third head that I knocked out is likely going to be back by now. There! Well, have time to use another one of these. I got so many of these, I may as well use one. Did I use that one a bit in the past? Yeah, I see these ones don't have the sparkle. So I did use some of these up in the past, like, a couple times. When did I do that? Oh crap. If you ask me, those should have hit. I was aiming dead on. I think they're all down? Nope. I should have shot once more. Gotcha. Oh. Ray, my favorite phase. Unless I go like get a couple of free shots. Nope.
I know Gleok did not like that. <clears throat> I should probably heal while I still can before those hearts, you know, break. Hurry, hurry. <gasps> Fine, you want me to fucking put on the unshockable armor? I will fucking put on the unshockable armor. Are you fucking happy now? Fall damage for the win. Not on me! Give me your guts, bitch. Oh, you know what we actually... We need to do that as well. Right, I completely forgot. We need to go to the... Uh, the, the forge. And, uh, you know. Uh, where is that again? Crystallize charges and get ourselves our battery upgrade. We actually haven't done that yet. Holy damn, there's a lot of gifts in Pokemon Go for me to open before it turns midnight. And I don't have space to carry all the items. <clears throat> the Crystal Refinery. Oh yeah, definitely. Go for it. There you go, folks, unless you're telling me I can do this a third time. Hmm. Okay. I don't really need any of this. Unless there's a secret one, an exclusive one here, that I don't have in my inventory yet. Nope, I already have all of them. <clears throat> Let's go and heal real quick. I'm just going to stall for 10 more minutes, uh, you know, for it to turn to midnight, and then use my amiibos and call it. 
I guess we're now just starting the side quest, because, you know, disappointingly, there's no point to me doing the Phantom Ganons. Damn. To be honest, the real only reason for me to do the Phantom Ganons was to stamp them on the map. But there's, like, unfortunately, no reason to anymore. That sucks. Oh, but trust. We still have a lot of other things to do in the game. If anything, that's that's a benefit. That'll save us so much time from having to do other stuff. We still got the, uh... The remaining armors to upgrade, all the side quests, which is obviously what we're doing next. All of the... Uh, Hudson construction signs to hold up. All of the uh, compendium we're gonna buy. So, you know, don't really need to worry about that unless I don't have enough rupees. But yeah, still a lot of stuff to do. We only have, what, 40 something out of like. Damn near 140 side quests done. I only have like 40 something out of 139 side quests done. And those are just the regular side quests. What about the long quests? Look at Link with his blue battery pack now. Wow, 42 out of 60? You know what, I should probably start next time by looking up where the remaining two shrine quests are. Because I already did all the shrines, so I already completed them by default. I just need to know where they are so I can actually get them. I'm going to look into that for next time. A wife wafted away. Hmm... Oh, stone slabs. Yeah, I gotta do that as well, of course. He's worried about the pair, but can't leave the store check on them. Ph photographing a choo-choo, I can do that, but uh, later on. Uh... The heroine's secret. You must still find the four stale. Yikes. We have a lot of work ahead of us. I'm just gonna... Ugh. Let me just quickly do this stuff in Pokemon Go before it turns midnight. So how you guys been? I'm sorry that, you know, I couldn't finish the Phantom Ganons, but ultimately I decided that there's no point to do it with the way I've been doing it. I mean, I could still do them, you know, but it's like at this point, what's the point, right? They're not required for completion. And you know what? No longer required for completion in my book. So it's like, why should I bother? <sighs> Sorry about this. Let me just send this gift real quick. And then I'm done.
Okay. Yeah, 48 out of 139. So we have just about 90. We have 91 left to do. 10 pieces of flint, a Gerudo scimitar. Oh shit, that's right. This is one I need to do. Crap. Oh, the, the Urbosa amiibo is really going to help with this one, as long as I remember to do it. <coughs> huh, I already did this one, so let's just go and get this one done. Huh. <sighs> And a part of me expected like Skyloft music to start playing. <laughs> you're doing, wasn't it? Thank you very, very, very much. Here's a little something for you. Don't be modest. You deserve it. Nice. Ooh. Now it's high time for us to get back on the road. Stay safe out there. Hey, why are you still here? Uh. Today is gonna be a good day. I can feel it. You can walk with me to the work site if you want. Why? Is there any other ones that I could just, like, go and get done? Offer the golden stat- ferocious claw. Do I have that? I should. The question is, do I have two? No, I only have one. But I can still do that. I can just get another one. Fuck me, that one's not done yet, certainly. So it seems like the only one I can get done now, like, immediately for now, is this. I may as well, right? I just have to make a mental note. Next time we see Farosh, get a claw. Seek the golden spirit for Roche, who, loose, who looses lightning as she dances across the heavens. Oh! I didn't know Farosh was a female. Okay, just offer it to the water. I don't, by chance, imagine I can get that back, right? Thank you, devout swordsman. I have sent a message, a measure of my strength to the Mother Goddess statue. For this poised deed, I shall bestow upon you a small blessing. 
Oh wow, a topaz. So I imagine I need a claw of the other two. No, of course I don't get. Of course I don't get it back. Great, so there's another one we can immediately get done, but all of these ones I currently have, yeah, these ones are going to take some time. Okay, so it's midnight, so let's just use my amiibos real quick, and then let us get out of here. So next time, I'm going to start already having removed all the Phantom Ganon stamps on the map. It's a shame that I have to do it, but it has to be done. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention too, like something else I need to mention, that Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, that is now out. It came out like a day or two ago, or three. I have not seen it yet. I don't know when I'm going to see it. I don't know if I'm going to see it. But this film is indeed the final film in the DCEU. And well, I hear mixed reactions on it. I hear some people love it, some people hate it, some people think it's like, it's mid. I don't know, I really like the first one. Aquaman is my favorite DCEU film. I bet you guys were expecting me to say favorite DC character. <laughs> no, Aquaman is my favorite DCEU film. I know a lot of people's favorites are Wonder Woman. I favor Aquaman's film more. So I don't know if I will go see the sequel just because of like mixed reactions, but I know I should judge it for myself. I should not let other things influence my decision. I should watch, consume it, and judge it for myself. I know that. I mean, hell, would you guys really have wanted me to do that for the Marvels? Which I still haven't seen yet. And, you know... Thinking about this being the death of the DCEU, it made me realize, like, wait a second. That's right, Blue Beetle. I haven't watched Blue Beetle yet. I still need to do that. I completely forgot that Blue Beetle came out and that I haven't seen it yet. Is my Master Sword not back yet? Close. You know, I'm gonna hold off on these amiibos. Just why shit, I already used it. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say I'm gonna hold off on these amiibos so I can reset for the good weapons. Never mind. I guess I'll do that next time. If I get a good weapon, then I'll keep it. If not, then it is what it is. It is what it is. So something else, so the Indigo Disc DLC just came out for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as of me playing this. And we got the other remaining Paradox Pokemon for not only the Johto Beast, but also the Swords of Justice. Uh, we now know of the Pokemon Gouging Fire alongside Raging Bolt. And I said this as I played the Pokemon DLC. It's like... I can't wait for the anime to say gouging fire, the fire type. It's like, this Pokemon is known as G 
gouging fire. It's a fire type Pokemon. I'm just waiting for the anime to say something like that, and you know, I just wait for that clip to get memed if it ever happens. Like really, gouging fire, the fire type Pokemon. Really, you don't say. I don't know, it's just really weird to me, now that we have a Pokemon's name with the word of the t with, the, with the word that is the typing. Like, what if Raging Bolt's name was Raging Electric? You know? It's like, really? Raging Electric, the electric type, really, you don't say. It's like, couldn't they have came up with other words besides just flat-out fire? Yep. You know, like, gouging flame. What about that? Since this shield is used up a bit, I'm gonna get a fresh one and attach that to this. And also, the Paradox Pokemon for the Swords of Justice, not gonna lie, they look pretty stupid. Especially Iron Boulder, the Paradox for Terrakian. Why is it lacking so much color? You know, Iron Leaves is green. Iron Crown is a very, like, I don't wanna say vibrant, but it's like very blue. Why is Iron Boulder missing so much color? It's basically just chrome with a couple of, like, very dark brown patches every here and there. Like, why is Iron Boulder missing so much color? You guys ever feel like the Pokemon Company will one day regret certain Pokemon that they've made? Besides Basculin? It's like, you think one day, a couple decades from now, they're gonna regret these Pokemon? They're gonna think like, oh, back during the time, we thought these Pokemon were a good idea. But now looking back, it's like, yeah, this, this was a pretty stupid thing we did, and we can't take it back. Like, you ever think they're gonna think like that? <sighs> Ugh. Can I get lucky and get one of the weapons I need from this Urbosa amiibo? Nope. <clears throat> and also something else. Uh so, Gen 9, Generation 9 of Pokemon has a really weird Pokedex. Like, here, I took a screenshot of it to send to my friend to really show him. Like, as of this moment, as of this moment, the latest Pokemon in the Pokedex is Terrapagos. That new Mochi mythical Pokemon hasn't happened yet as of right now. So this is the screenshot I took from Pokemon Home. This is the Pokedex right now. God, this is weird. Like one day, like if you didn't have context, one day looking at the Pokedex, you're going to wonder. Why is like Diplin's evolution Hydrapple like so far away from it? You see that? There's like so many other Pokemon in between this thing's evolution. And then you're also going to see like Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. Why is it so far separated from the other Pokemon in that group's trio? You know what I mean? And also, have you noticed? So the Pokedex goes Raikou, Entei, Suicune. And then Cobalion, Terrakion, Verizion. So, you know, one, two, three. Now, it's completely backwards. It's Walking Wake, Suicune, Entei, Raikou. It's backwards. 
Verizian, Cobalion, Terrakian. Oh shit, I said that wrong. Verizian, Terrakian, Cobalion. It's backwards. A part of me likes it, but I mostly hate it. So, Suicune being first, and then Entei and Raikou, it's like, that's not a big deal. But it's the Swords of Justice, Verizian. And then you see this. You see Terrakian come before Cobalion. That's just not right. That looks weird. I mostly hate it because of this. I hate it because Iron Boulder is before Iron Crown in the Pokedex. It bothers me. I hate it. It's it, it doesn't feel right. But then again, like, when has Pokemon ever done something that feels right? You know? If they did, then Mew would be before Mewtwo in the Pokedex. But it's like, who, who am I to say anything, you know? You know, it's just so weird that it used to be 1, 2, 3, Raikou, Entei, Suicune. Now it's 3, 2, 1, Suicune, Entei, Raikou. It used to be Cobalion, Terrakian, Verizian. Now it's Verizian, Cobalion, and Terrak... Shit, I keep saying that wrong. Now it's Cobal... No. Now it's Verizian, Terrakian, and Cobalion. You see, just on instinct, I say Cobalion before Terrakian. I'm sure I said this many times. As a kid, just seeing Cobalion's name, I thought it was pronounced... Cobalion. So, for the longest time, I literally pronounced its name Cobalion. Oh my god, I just found the legendary Pokemon Cobalion! Is that worse than saying Rayquaza compared to Rayquaza? Or like Regice, Regice, Arceus, Arceus? Or, you know what? Verizian versus Verizian. God damn it, nobody on YouTube, nobody on the internet can say its Pokemon name right. It's not Verizian, you fools. It's Verizian. I feel like I'm the only one who pronounces its name right. It's not Verizian. Folks, it's Verizon, like Verizon Mobile. It's Verizon. Watch the frickin' movie. Yep. Nice. Should I fuse this in the Master Sword? Uh. No, it's fine. I'll just use that to the Master Sword instead. arrows am I at? Wow, I am missing a lot. <clears throat> well, since it seems like we won't be doing a lot of fighting uh, for the foreseeable future, we're doing the side quests next. We won't really be using our arrows that much, so we'll have a chance to restock. Yep. Oh, very nice. It's not like I'll ever use these, but it's always good to have. And you know, I also saw on Twitter, X, that like, uh, Terrapagos, its whole gimmick is terrestrializing. Uh, I saw on Twitter, X saying like, enjoy it while it lasts, cause 
Terrasalizing will not return in the next game. And, well, what about Terrapicos, whose entire freaking gimmick is Terrasalizing? Without Terrasalizing, well, you just basically have the, uh, the base form for Terrapicos, and, uh, you can't really do much with that. Terrapicos is kind of just a rupee. Like, this game's rupee, but with, like, arms, legs, and a head. I can't be the only one who noticed that. It, it was a pretty thick rupee. It almost looked like Skyward Sword rupees. Extremely thick. You know, extra thick! Kind of looked like a silver rupee from Skyward Sword. That grew arms, legs, and a head. I see fish, and they will be mine. No fish on this side? Okay, one. That's fine. I'll take it. Excuse me, Cox. Let's just sell all the armors we got. We need all the rupees we can get to buy everything from the compendium. Alright, that's uh, gonna be where I end this for today. So, thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Actually, before that, let's see. Could one last encounter and it be shiny? Damn it. Nope. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Bye now.